Man, it's been a while. Hmm. Uh. Oh my gosh, guys, you can tell I'm tired. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kylie, rhymes with smiley, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is video number seven. I literally have no idea. I'm gonna check. You know, why not? Hey guys, what's up? I'm Kylie, rhymes with smiley, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Channel? Channel. Video number six? Is this now? Oh my gosh, I was right guys, it's number seven! Yeah, video number seven. Today, we are going to be doing a Q&A, which I said I was gonna do a couple weeks ago, but I just didn't do it because um, I just was in the mood to do a leotard for my sister's birthday, you know? If you haven't checked that video out, it's gonna be, I think, up here. I asked you guys what questions you had for me on my Instagram, so let's get into the questions. Hmm. Question one is, how can I get a taste of professional training if my studio is only recreational? This is a really good question. For me personally, my sister and I, we both dance and we used to go to a more recreational studio around where we lived. After I had been there for like five or six years, we felt like we needed um, a more rigorous training schedule that we weren't getting um, at our current studio. Not everybody wants to be a professional in dance and that's okay. We had been to like summer intensives and that's one of the things I would recommend is that if your studio is recreational in your opinion and that you feel like you need more rigorous dance training, look for workshops in your area at other studios. Uh, I used to do a ton of those before we moved to New York for like more of a rigorous dance training. And I'm so lucky that I was able to do that. Um, not everybody can, but if you have the means to do so, go to a summer intensive that you know that is pretty rigorous and that will help you get where you want to be. Everybody is different in what they want to achieve and the goals that they want to achieve. And right now is like the perfect time to like take all these amazing free classes on Instagram or on Zoom with professionals in the industry and you don't even have to leave the comfort of your own home. So uh, that's what I would recommend. Uh. Good morning. Next question is, have you done YAGP? And if so, how does one get involved with it? So I think what this person is asking is, have I done YGP? The answer to that is yes. Uh, I will be doing a YGP kind of like rundown, breakdown of like how I liked it and how I prepared for it and like my experiences there. So that'll be a different video. Yes, I have done YGP. I've done it three times and each time was a little bit different, which I'll also explain in the YGP video eventually. For those of you who don't know, YGP is the Youth America Grand Prix, which is um, a ballet competition, which you can also do contemporary at. You can sign up to do some ballet variations and contemporary solos. They have pas de deux, which is the step of two in French. <laughs> and they have ensemble pieces that you can also register to perform. And... There's somebody outside. The first time was with my more recreational studio and it was really fun. They invited me to go but you don't have to be invited. Anybody can sign up for YAGP as far as I know. Um, and you can go as an independent or if other people from your studio want to participate in YAGP, um, totally reach out to your directors and see if they'd be cool with like you going as a group. You know, it's always a fun activity with your friends to do. I don't know how it's going to go on after COVID is over. So just keep that in mind, but um, yeah, you just go to the YGP website and uh, there's like a register column and that's how you register and you pick your location and your preference and classical variation and a contemporary piece. Um, you can you can do two classical, no contemporary, classical contemporary, and then you can do two contemporary, but if you choose to do two contemporary, you won't be eligible to go to finals, which is like all of their winners from all the locations coming together and competing. So. That's that. So somebody asked, what is my favorite ballet? 
I don't think I have a favorite. I love a lot of ballets, um, contemporary ballets included. Um, I love anything done by Yuri Killian or Ohad Naharin. And then my favorite classical ballets are probably, to name a few, um, Giselle is really, it's definitely one of my favorites. Swan Lake, I know this is so basic, but there's only so many ballets, you know, uh, that I've seen at least. I really like Le Corsair. I am obsessed with Medora variations. I love them so much. So that is my favorite ballet. Somebody asked, what do you love about dancing the most? Where do I begin? There's not just one thing that I love about dancing the most. I really like how it makes me feel when I'm doing it. It's something that I can do if I'm feeling sad and I can just go and turn on some music and move around and get my body moving and it usually ends up making me feel better so I really love that about it. And I love the challenge that it presents and the way you have to think about certain things mentally. I really love that. I don't know. Dance is awesome guys. Um, can't say enough about it. Somebody asked when did you start dancing? Well I mean I have been like dancing around my house since I was like able to walk whenever music would come on so i guess i've been dancing all my life <laughs> cheesy yeah i've been dancing forever but formal dance classes i've been taking since i was i started taking hip-hop when i was nine and then i didn't start taking ballet till i was 10 or 11 something like that so i started late but i mean everybody's different everybody has a different path to their journey so Somebody asked, what are some of your favorite healthy breakfast slash lunches? I have a pretty vast, what's the word? What's the word, my nerd? I don't know, I have a pretty large selection of things that I eat. I'm not a picky eater. Except for like peas, I don't know. I've always hated peas and I don't know why. Don't come for me, I just don't like them. I don't know why. I really like bacon and eggs, turkey bacon and eggs, which are all pretty healthy, I feel like. Um, so it just depends on how I'm feeling. Sometimes we'll have yogurt with berries mixed in. I love fruit. Love fruit, eat it all the time. Not just for breakfast, just breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. You know, the good stuff. I'm not a big sandwich person, so. That's just my prerogative, but if you love sandwiches, go you. Salads, oh my God, salads. Why didn't I think of that? I love salad, I love it. So good. Somebody asked, what was the preparation like for Juilliard? I assume this is about like my audition process, which I've already explained and I have it right here for you to watch, so go check that out and you will get all the info that you want. And if you don't see something that you want and you have more questions, just leave it in the comments below and I will try my best to answer it for you. Somebody asked, how do you keep a positive mindset when you are struggling? It's That's a pretty vague question, but I assume that it's like when you're not feeling the best or you're just feeling down. I have a lot of those days and I think a lot of people do and it's okay you it's okay not to be okay and i know that everybody says that but it's very true like if you're not feeling the best like you don't have to force yourself to be happy right away like just kind of let yourself feel in the dumps for a little bit but then um i would take the time to like distract yourself or try to take your mind off the thing that's upsetting you just try to find like a neutral ground you don't even have to necessarily make yourself happy you can just make yourself like content so that's what I would say. So how I keep a positive mindset, I think it's really different for everybody and it also depends on the situation. But how I try to keep a positive mindset is I try to do things that distract me or just make me feel good, like play Animal Crossing. If you don't have Animal Crossing and you have the means to get Animal Crossing, I highly recommend it. It is very therapeutic and it has been the favorite thing about quarantine for me, so. I highly recommend. But yeah, do something that you like to do. Read a book or watch some YouTube videos. I would recommend positive YouTube videos. Like this. But positive YouTube videos. There are definitely a bunch of positive YouTube videos out there, but there's definitely some negative ones with like a negative connotation almost to them. So I just be aware of that and uh, try to do something that makes you happy. Everybody goes through that. Everybody. You're not alone. So don't you worry. 
we're in this together. Somebody asked what is the hardest style of dance that I've had to learn so far. Well, I'm sure that this will change when I start like full classes at Juilliard. I'm very excited and nervous and nervous sighted. I would say the hardest style that I've had to learn so far is probably, I don't know, like ballet is pretty hard. And it's always like a constant chain of growth for any kind of dance. Like it's never like you learn all of ballet and you're done. It's like forever a process of uh, feeling different things, I guess. So I would probably say ballet has been the hardest because it's like a forever process ballet it is. Okie dokie. Somebody asked healthy snacks to eat before and after dance. Um, I really love RX bars. I love anything from the Kind brand, Kind products. So good. Um, sometimes I'll have like a little yogurt cup with some fruit in it, like I said before. Really love that. Yeah, I would say protein bars, granola bars, whatever, whatever you vibe with. For a long time, I didn't like granola bars and protein bars. So if you're one of those people and you like beef jerky, I love beef jerky. Um, unpopular opinion, but it's really good. So that's a good one. That'll keep you going. I think that's about it for me. Somebody said, have you ever not felt confident in ballet? And if so, what did you do to gain confidence? That's a big one for me. Um, I have not always been confident in ballet and there's still times like, you know, on the daily, weekly, whenever that I don't feel confident in ballet, just cause ballet is very like subjective to the day that you're doing it. Like one day I could like do four turns and the next day I probably couldn't even pull off a single. It's just different from day to day. So for me, I would just keep that in mind because like nobody's perfect. Even professional dancers have their good and bad days. It's just hard to take yourself out of the moment in the moment. So I would just think about that, that you might just be having an off day. If you're not feeling the best, that's what I try to focus on. And if it's something like extension, which for me is a challenge, um, I've not always had good extension and I'm still working on it, especially in quarantine, taking the time now, working at 90 degrees or 45 degrees, whatever works for you, and like finding the correct placement, stuff like that really helps me in ballet. If there's something that's not working out for me, I try to take a different approach to it and uh, try to think about it a different way. So that's what I do. The same person asked also, have you ever felt like you didn't belong in dance because you weren't as good as others? Yeah, all my life. <laughs> I mean, dance is such a competitive thing, but you don't necessarily like, you're not necessarily um, conscious of it. I think healthy competition is good. A lot of the times I like to have people that are better than me in the class so that I can like strive for something and like it helps me motivate and push myself to do my best. But it's definitely hard because comparing myself to others has been something that I've done a lot in my life, not just in dance. So I think that something to remember for when you're feeling that way is um, that everybody is different. Everybody has something to bring to the table. It's not a uh, end all be all of what dance should look like. It's different for everybody. But to answer the question a little more specifically, it's have you ever felt like you didn't belong in dance because you weren't as good as others? Like when I was first starting out or when I'd start a new style or I'm in an environment that is unfamiliar to me, uh, I try to, you know, keep in mind that I just started out or whatever circumstance I'm, I have for that class, I try to keep that in mind. And I have felt like I didn't belong. I'm like, oh, everybody knows how to do Martha Graham and I don't, uh, I don't belong in this class. I don't know what to do. But I mean, you just have to push yourself to the limit. And um, the worst you can do is mess up. And it's not the end of the world if you mess up. So, you know, be able to not laugh at yourself, but um, laugh at your mistakes and try to get back up and keep going because you're awesome. Yeah, so that's what I would say. A lot of people ask tips for getting a flexible back and back strengthening, flexibility, all that kind of stuff. What I would say, I do not have a very flexible back at all. My sister has the flexible back, so she got that. But for me, like just, little movements you don't even need to go for extreme back stretches i don't not like this <laughs> probably like rib cage isolations like out in side side kind of stuff 
or um, backups if you know. I'll probably do like um, a strengthening routine video at some point as well so look out for that it's hard because you're born with the spine you have so i wouldn't like give yourself too much grief but there are definitely things you can do to strengthen your back like backups like i said or arabesques holding and trying to slowly get your leg up higher and higher just little by little um don't pump it don't kick anything very like violently because you could hurt yourself be careful but yeah look out for that video in the future but that's what i will have to say about it right now somebody asked what's been the hardest part of dance for you like what have you struggled with the most i would say placement yeah placement in anything especially ballet but it really translates to other styles of dance as well it's really been something i've had to do um teachers have told me that i stick my pelvis out and then i tried to fix it and i overcorrected and i tucked for a really long time and then i went to a physical therapist who really helped me with my like mental thinking of placement and it's gotten a lot better i mean of course i'm still working on it like everybody's working on everything all the time you know yeah placement was definitely one really big one for me uh, last question to keep it lighthearted and just kind of goofy partnering fails have you had any well have i got a story for you at my first summer intensive which was abt's new york summer intensive I had gone into it not knowing partnering at all. I've never done anything. I never, ever, 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 ever. So I was very nervous. I didn't know what it was like. It was on point. We were like partnering with guys and 13 year old me was like, for real? Like it was, it was really scary for me. At 13, I was more on the taller end of 13 year old. But for some reason, I got partnered with the shortest guy in class. They had us line up in height order from shortest to tallest. So. We we're doing partnering and I got partnered with the shortest guy. So on point, his like head was at my arm height. So, you know, you could imagine I got some big feet. So I just get taller when I'm on point. It was going okay. It was going as good as it could have been going. And we bore a fourth. We start to do a pirouette and my partner has his mouth open and I just feel him lick all the way around my arm as I'm turning. And then he just drops me and he just looks at me and walks away. True story, I'm not exaggerating. That's exactly what happened. All I can say is from that experience, I appreciate partners who do not do that to me much more. So that is it. Thank you guys for asking your questions. I really appreciate it. I hope I answered them for you. If I didn't get to something that you asked, I'll probably do another one of these in the future. If you have more questions, you can just leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring the bell so you know every time that I post a video. Thank you guys for watching. Love you guys very much. I hope you have a great Sunday or whatever day you're watching this on. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Ah! Oh my God, what? It gets crazier every video. Okay, bye guys. <laughs>